are Locked On Spurs, your daily San Antonio Spurs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, this is Hot Rod. And I'm RC from the Cybertron Spurs. And you're listening to Locked On Spurs with Jeff Jeff Garcia. On Spurs right here on the Locked On NBA Network. I'm your host, Jeff Garcia, Spurs writer for Ken's 5 San Antonio. As always, we thank you for making Locked On Spurs your first listen each and every day. Free and available wherever you get podcasts, Ken's 5 Plus app, Google Play, Stitcher, iTunes, the list goes on and on. Hey, hey, Vinny, guess who's with me? The Vin Dog. <laughs> the Vin Dog is here with me here at the Frost Center. Post game, Spurs, brace yourself, Vinny. They beat the Thunder. Yes, the Thunder, 132 to 118, their 12th win in a row. Yay, Spurs. Vinny, let's talk about some takeaways. First of all, thank you for coming on Lockdown Spurs. I appreciate that. We're, we're, we're on location. We are on this, location. This, this is a first for <laughs> Lockdown Spurs. But, yes, good to be with you. Yeah, he is my colleague at Ken's 5. So, uh, Vinny, and away we go. Three takeaways. Let's dive into it. What is your first takeaway? What was the biggest key for the Spurs to get this big win over OKC? So, Jeff, in the fourth quarter, they closed really hard. O- OKC had cut it to, I believe, 98-96 to end the third. They actually took the lead in the fourth, but they outscored the Thunder 34-22. I think it was Trey Jones who mentioned in post game that we've kind of been in these positions before and kind of folded up our tents and didn't close the thing out. And we've had some games recently where we've had fourth quarter opportunities mm-hmm. and nothing panned out, came to fruition. All that happened tonight. They did. So when it looked like, oh, here we go again, they really buckled down, uh, coming off the tough rodeo road trip and closed this thing hard in the fourth quarter. I was impressed by that. There was a buzz in the air the whole game, like something special could happen tonight. Even when they got down late in the third, a little bit in the fourth, they looked like they did not want to let this game go. Wimby, Sohan, everybody. As a matter of fact, that might be one of your takeaways, right? Some individual players. Oh, my goodness. I mean, can we get the poster made right now of oh, Wimby yes. blocking yes. Chet, yes. The, the mid-range free throw line jumper? I think I saw uh, uh, one of the Spurs PR people excited about one of the pictures that their yeah. staff got of, of, of Wimby blocking Chet. But, yeah, he was he was impressive. Another double double. He was he was scoring. He was rebounding. He was blocking shots. Just really affecting the game. And they were talking in post game yeah. tonight, Jeff, uh, after after this win over the Thunder, that this is two games in a row that Wimby has played the entire fourth quarter. So Absolutely. he's sort of adjusting to that way of life in the NBA after they were slowly bringing him along all season. So to see him out there in what they call winning time. Yes. That was really impressive, too. Awesome, yeah. Wimby was Wimby again. Very special, as he mentioned. Fourth quarter play, yeah, all 12 minutes. Just a dominant force. My takeaway, balanced scoring. Yeah. I talked to Vassell. I talked to Trey Jones about this post game. What was interesting was that Vassell, well, actually, Trey Jones said that the team knows that Wimby and Vassell, they're going to eat. Right. They're going to get theirs. Yep. But yep. it's everybody else. Six players in double figures. That was key to beating one of the best teams in the West, OKC. Did, did the last team in the West just beat the first team in the West? They yes, sure did. that just happened tonight. But, yeah, you make a great point. I'm glad you asked those questions in postgame. Yeah, everybody uh, contributed. Uh, Devin kept looking at the stat sheet saying, I don't want to miss anybody. Who yeah. else do I need to call out? And he was going down the list of all the people that contributed. Yeah, I mean, that's it's, – it's, it's, it's a microcosm of what can be, and it's also – a roadmap for mm-hmm. who they can be. Look, Wimby's the guy. Yeah, he Everything is. has to go through him. Absolutely. This is not new news, but other guys can contribute and hit shots. And when you make shots, the beautiful game is suddenly that much more beautiful. And speaking of making shots, Trey Jones, key three-pointers late in the game to keep the Spurs at bay and give him the win. And uh, Devin Vassell was just Devin Vassell. Dare I say he is that one-two punch with Wimby? Has he established that, that the one-two winning combo? So, you know, sometimes uh, announcers in this league will say somebody is a professional scorer. Yeah. I mean, Devin Vassell is that. Absolutely. He is a professional scorer. And am I ready to say it's a one-two? I feel like I am. I mean, I guess I guess there's 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 a, a moment of hesitation or reservation. But, yeah, I, Devin Vassell can score. It's what he does. And so, yeah, I mean, it's a it, it's it, it's an A and B for sure. A one two punch. I mean, it's it's been really, really impressive. And, and I want to add a point, Jeff, about Trey Jones. I mean, am, am I wrong to say that he is absolutely the most improved spur oh, from sure. last no, season? Absolutely. I mean, yeah. the confidence shooting the basketball, believing, attacking and just running the show. 
man, he's come so far. Absolutely, yeah. Once again, your Spurs, yes, these Spurs beat the Thunder at home, 132-118. They'll next face the Pacers this Sunday here at the Frost. Maybe that good luck and keep over. Can we, can we get, dare I say, a winning streak going here? Uh, they were talking about in post game about just the energy and the vibe of having all the, the fans in the building. Yeah. And, and while it probably wasn't a sellout tonight, the energy helps. I mean, the NBA matters when you when you play at home. Does does everybody win them all? No, but we got a long stretch at home. I guess two Austin games mm. there in the middle up at up with the University of Texas at their place. But yeah, it's good to be back home, and I think they felt that, sense that, and this place just because of how spoiled Spurs fans are, and just know mm -hmm. how dominant this team has been in the league in recent years. They're into it no matter what the record is. Right, right. I mean, this team only improved to 12 and 48, but yet everybody was into it. Yeah, exactly. And so who knows what this could start? Are we trying to over-dramatize this? We're not. Well, maybe that's what we do. We're a in the media. Bit, a little bit. But they enjoy playing here, and because of who they have on mm -hmm. the floor, namely Victor Wimanyama, people are going to show up, and it's going to be a good crowd to watch these guys most yeah. most every night. Yeah, and another tough test for the Spurs, the Pacers, that, they, that ain't going to be easy. Score. They can score. Doug McDermott will make his return to San Antonio oh, after man. the trade to San Antonio. <laughs> so expect that video tribute to be way up there, way up there, you know, uh, if you come out to the game. But all in all, again, a great win for the Spurs, confidence boosting. We both heard – the team just hooting and hollering and yelling and, and praise, uh, you know, before they came out, some of the players came out to talk. So that locker room was electric. I mean, Pop was singing their praises, the assist. I mean, what is that, 30 plus assist? Uh, 39. Uh, 39 yeah. assists on the game. Wimby, yeah. in fact, on the on the post game table, he thought they had 50 assists tonight. That's, <laughs> yeah. how, that's how impressed he was by the Spurs offense. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> and uh, of course, great shooting. The, the, the shots were falling down, but Vassell talked about that as well. Just a great game from the Spurs. Um, close to playing 48 minutes, you know, a little hiccup here and there, but nevertheless, they got it done. Hopefully a sign of maturity for this Spurs team. Every every step is a small step in this process. And I think it was Trey Jones, or maybe it was Devin, who said, this is an example of what we're going to be mm -hmm. in the future and down the road. And nobody said, uh -oh. you know, anything like, we're about to go on a run and yeah, get, yeah, get, yeah. get ready. You know, no, everybody no. stayed even tempered and kept it right down the middle. And, and I just think they believe that this is, again, albeit a small sample, an example of the roadmap that they can mm -hmm. be. And yep. uh, I, I don't think there's any doubt that they're improve, no, there's improving. No, there's no doubt. I mean, they're, they're still up and down. It's going to be probably, honestly, a roller coaster the rest of the way. But to hear Victor say, you know, with this stretch of home games, I think they believe that there's a chance to, at the very least, finish strong this mm -hmm. campaign. Absolutely, absolutely. Once again, your Spurs win, 132 to 118. They beat the OKC Thunder. He is the Vin Dog. Make sure to follow him on X at V Vincetta. What else you got cooking? A lot of stuff. Uh, I, I've spent some time visiting, you know, Jeff Trailer, the head coach at UTSA. He's got a, a lot of alumni in the city here, Jeff, that are high school, uh, high school football assistant coaches. And that really helps in the recruiting wars. Mm -hmm. Prospective D1 athletes at any of our high schools can talk to these assistants and say, what were your playing days like oh, at UTSA? Yeah. And maybe why should I consider the road runners? So uh, jumping into that and uh, got some, we got the state tournament for girls basketball this weekend, boys state tournament next weekend so a lot of good stuff going on as usual exactly you know where to follow him on x at v vencetta hey coming up next we have michael jimenez yes he's gonna be joining me we're gonna be discussing vassell is he the one-two punch with wimby and then ask is wimby up for the defensive player of the year could he actually do it that's coming up next right here on locked on spurs Hey, I want to talk to you about FanDuel. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. Be Pretty much just be there. Get the app right now. Go get yourself the FanDuel app. Bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and so much more. You want to go to FanDuel.com slash locked on right now and shoot your shot. Hey, look. The Spurs season is wrapping up. It's winding down. You still have time to have fun watching your favorite team, the Silver and Black, do their thing on the court. And what better way to do that than with FanDuel, again, America's number one sports book. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on right now, everybody. FanDuel, official sports book partner of the NBA.
I also want to talk about Muslingers Drive Through Coffee. Go to Muslingers Drive Through Coffee right now if you're in San Antonio, 2404 Thousand Oaks Drive. That's in the 281 to 1604 area. They have it all lattes, check, cold brews, check, signature drinks like the Muslinger Coffee, check. What about dairy alternatives or non caffeinated drinks? They have it all. They even have the Red Bull infused Lightning Bolt series. Hey, look, they're a proud local sponsor of Locked On Spurs, proud community member of San Antonio. Their menu is extensive. Mini donuts, yeah, they're not just all about drinks and coffee. They can vary it up. They also have a friendly staff. And again, convenient location, 2404 Thousand Oaks Drive, open every single day from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Follow them on social media at Muslinger SATX, whether that be on X, Threads, TikTok, Facebook. Pick a platform, they are there. So go to Muslinger's Drive Through Coffee right now, everybody in San Antonio, 2404 Thousand Oaks Drive, open every day to 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Why? Because life is too short for a bland coffee. All right, and we're now back right here on Lockdown Spurs with Mike Jimenez of the Animal City Sports Podcast. Follow him on X at MJ Acquired Chase. MJ, do you do you need a do you need a coffee there or something? You're yawning before we brought you on. Oh, dude, I'm I'm exhausted, but uh, no, I'm happy to be on. Yeah, glad to have you back. And no, everybody, we're not going to talk Sohan, although somehow he made us a crowbar Sohan's name in here uh, in a, in a little while. But we're going to be discussing Vassell. Has his recent play bumped him into the category of untouchable alongside Wimby? And then we're going to speak of Wimby. We're going to be talking about the DPOI award, Defensive Player of the Year award. Has Wimby done enough to make it a strong candidate? And actually, this topic is actually generated by Jimenez. He's the one who showed me some information about it. So we're going to be talking about that and more. But first, Jimenez, before we dive in, how are you doing? What's going on? I'm doing great, man. You know, it's still watching the last two months of the Spurs and, uh, we're waiting for this season to kind of come to a close because I can't wait for the NBA draft and the lottery coming up in a few months. You, you, you know, I, I'm more excited about the offseason than I am with these last mm-hmm. uh, 20-something games, you know, because I think the the season, is it is what it is already. You know, it, it's already a wash. It's been a wash for a while. So, yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, I mean, there's some stuff to be excited about. I think the Austin games are going to be fun, you know, just to experience that. It's going to be bigger and better than last year. I don't know if you remember this. Last year, they rain, they got rained out. And they also, a lot of events were killed because of the weather. This year, right. the weather's cooperating, so they're going to go full force. Everybody, you want to check out yesterday's Locked On Spurs with uh, Brandon James. He is the uh, Spurs VP of Strategic Growth. He talks about that and more. But speaking of the current season and the roster, look, he made us, it is what it is. The season's done for all intents and purposes. We're just kind of coasting to the last 20 games. But this is about roster evaluation. At least that's how I'm approaching the last few games. And one of the uh, topics that has been floated about as the postseason uh, gets around, offseason that is, I should say, is who's staying and who's going. Now, there everybody saying, hey, Wimby, you know, he needs a team around him. He needs that Batman and Robin duo. Who's the Robin to his Batman? Blah, blah, blah. We heard it all. But Vassell. Vassell has really come on of late, is actually slowly perhaps becoming that one-two punch with Wemby. Has Vassell upped himself to the untouchable segment on this roster? Well, yes and no. Uh, Okay, so if Batman's number one and Robin's number two, is number three the butler? Is that who the the number three is? Number three, there is like Batgirl or something. (laughs) Okay, well, that's where Devin Vassell resides. I want him on this team. We need him on this team. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it's one of those things where you take a look at it. About a month ago, we were talking about the fact that Devin Vassell kind of considered himself to be the alpha, kind of considered himself to be the number one. Mm-hmm. And would he be able to take it within himself to actually slide down to the number two position? Mm-hmm. And he has. And it's weird because he has done that in the last month, and his points have actually increased. Mm-hmm. So think about that. Think about that. He has taken a back seat, taking fewer shots, but has become more efficient. The month of February, averaging 21 points per game. His season average jumping to a career high 19.1. He's shooting 37% from three for the season. He is showing that he belongs to be around Wemby. And one thing about Vassell that I've noticed last few games, it's kind of hard to say this because the Spurs defense is very spotty. Seems to be getting a little bit better on the defensive side of the ball. 
I, I saw him pick some pockets against the T-Wolves, and it's like, wait a minute, where has yeah. that been? And in, in prior games, he's been doing much the, of the same. So mm-hmm. I want to say that Vassell, I want to say that he's untradeable. That would be the hardest pill to swallow when it comes to any of the Spurs players not named Wemby being mm-hmm. traded. It better be for somebody mm-hmm. really good mm-hmm. if Vassell's name is going to be attached to anything. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I, I think he's flirting with untouchable status right now. He's right there. I want to see how he finishes out these last 20-something games uh, playing alongside Wimby because you're looking at his numbers, and you hit it on the head. His numbers have skyrocketed this month. I actually got him here. Just pull him up here. So uh, 33 minutes per game, that is – well, 33.7. That's actually his highest minutes per uh, this season in this month of February. Last second close was the last month, January 33.5. So you went up a tick. One thing I like, Kimenez, is, is that he's been durable for the most part. Mm-hmm. You know, that was kind of a question mark. Is Vassell injury prone? Is he reliable? He's been that so far so good this season. Knock on wood. 22 points per game in the month of February, 4.5 rebounds per game this month, 4.5 assists, shooting 70, 47%, excuse me. And I like this 43% from the three line. He's taking about mm-hmm. six shots from the three line. He's making about three. So it was really close to 50% there. Uh, 6.6 to be exact attempts. The point is he has upped his game. If this last part of the season is about talent slash roster evaluation, whew, I think he's making a case for untouchable. I think he's right there. But you talked about how, if the Spurs are going to flip him, it better be for a damn good player. What would be considered a damn good player in Mikey Menace's mind? Well, the one that's the obvious one uh, that Spurs fans have been talking about is Trey Young. <laughs> um, I think it's the contention from a lot of people is we would much rather it be Keldon mm-hmm. if that was the case, or maybe Sohan if that were the case. Uh, but when it comes to Devin Vassell, I mean, he's not ever going to reach untradeable status. It's just the one that would give you the most heartburn if it does happen. Yeah. I like what he brings to the table. Uh, he's been part of the Spurs organization for a while. And it's just one of those things where I can see him actually taking a leap. You and I talked about this uh, before the season started. Would Devin Vassell take yet another leap this year? I, I think he's improved, but we can't use the word leap. But I do think he has another one in him. And if he does, I mean, that's getting him to 21, 22 points per game. You kind of want to get that guy uh, and keep him long term. Yeah, I, I, you know, that's a good, that's a good point. Has he taken a leap? I think maybe not a leap. I think he's taken a hop. You know, yeah. like a hop, not like this. Whoa, my God! You know, an MIP candidate, most improved player candidate. I don't think he's there, but he's taken a a nice hop, uh, and I like it. And what I like about this, uh, about his play this season, uh is that he gets up for big games. So those above 500 teams, you know, your late, your, uh, your Denver's, uh, you know, your Boston. Look at some of the numbers here. He meant is uh, teams with an above 500 record. He averages about 20.1 points per game, 3.5 rebounds, 3.6 assists. And he shoots about 49% uh, versus sub 500. He averages about 17 points per game and 42% shooting from the field. So, I like that he raises his game. I like that he's there for those big matches. I also like the fact, too, that he's he's done a good job of balancing, you know, his time to eat versus finding Wimby. That was a struggle early in the season. You know, he was kind of like the guy that a lot of fans would point to, like, Vassell, what are you doing? Vassell, you're not the Batman. Vassell, stop. Now he's found a nice balance. Is this a combo team duo, Wimby and Vassell, that you start building with? Are we there yet? Are we saying, are we beyond, hey, you build around Wimby, are we now, you build around Vassell and Wimby? I would like to think so. Uh, I think that the compliment would be a stud point guard uh, to do that with, and that's why the whole Trey Young thing comes into mind. Uh, you mentioned the fact that he gets up for big games against teams that have winning records. He also gets up for games that are nationally televised as well. Uh, but one of the yeah. things that I've noticed is that when I watch the games, I want to see what other fans' reactions are uh, who are watching the games na- nationwide, right? Spurs fans are going to have their opinions about various players. 
But I have noticed that whenever the Spurs play on national TV and I go on to Twitter and I search Devin Vassell's names, the compliments that he gets from people who aren't Spurs fans who say, this guy's pretty good. Who is this guy? Oh, I remember him from Florida State. And they start talking about how much improvement they've seen from him. And it, it's almost like he gets some respect from the casuals or from the NBA diehards who happen to be watching the game and who happen to be on social media. Uh, other Spurs players, whether it be Keldon, Sohan, uh, Zach Collins, or whomever, Trey Jones, don't get the same love that Devin Vassell seems to get, don't get to have the same amount of respect that he seems to be getting uh, from NBA fans elsewhere. I think people see how talented he is and would want to have him on their team. So Devin Vassell is a very, very solid player. I loved watching him at Florida State. I mean, he was my favorite college player that year when the Spurs drafted him. So I was super excited when the Spurs got him. But uh, do, you, do you consider him to be built around him? I think he's part of that piece. In, my, in a perfect world, he's not the Robin. He's not the number two. In a mm-hmm. perfect world, he's the number three. So that still leaves the question, is he untouchable? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, this was he's tough. Tu- he's touchable. He's touchable. He's touchable. I, I'm. I think I'm right there with you. I think he is touchable. But my goodness, whoever you know, fill in the blank NBA team you're dealing with, Spurs, that player coming back better be damn good. Or right. you get a Dejounte Murray type deal. You know those unprotected first round picks. You know all those the driving something to that point. I, you know I don't think Spurs fans will like that right now, considering the massive amount of picks they have right now. But if you're going to get that type of haul back, Sands a big name player then. You got to do it, you know. But if you're getting back an all star, bona fide all star point guard, preferably, uh, then yeah, you do it. But it's as the season goes on, you know, there were little games left. Do you think Vassell can improve these numbers? This is what he's doing this month. There's still, like you mentioned, about a month, month and a half to go. Do you still, are you still seeing that trajectory spiking up to close the season? Yeah, it'd be interesting to see how close to 20 points per game he can get. He would probably need to average about 24 points per game the rest of the way uh, to get to that 20-point marker for the season. Uh, It's not out of reach. I don't think it's going to happen. But I think he'll settle the season somewhere around 19.4, 19.5, which is is a very good number to hit. I mean, it it, it shows how talented he is. The efficiency that he has there is getting better and better. Uh, I saw his uh, effective field goal shooting uh, is now north of 55%, which means for every – 100 times he shoots the ball, he scores about 110 mm-hmm. points. Not bad. Not bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, just something to build on. And he's a bona fide starter. And, and that's the thing is that you and I talk about these players. Uh, I have oftentimes joked that the Spurs are built of half a team of NBA players and half a team mm-hmm. of G League players. He is a professional player. He is a starter. He is somebody who would start for more than half the teams in the NBA. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want Devin Vassell on this team long term. One thing I don't think gets a lot of um... – attention about his game is the fact that he actually plays a clean game you you never really see him in foul trouble you never see him. well you we gotta sit Devin Vassell you know he's racked up with four fouls last month January he averaged 1.1 fouls the month before that December 1.1 currently through 11 games played this month February 0. 0.7 <laughs> I, I like amazing. that he I like that he plays you know, so clean, so you know, no, almost near flawless to get pick up those fouls. So I think that's something I want to talk to him about. I really, really do. You know how he's able to uh, minimize fouls. So when you see that, I like okay, then that helps the team. That means you have that at least for this season. That secondary option should Wimby get in foul trouble or you know his rest time or Wimby ain't feeling it, and, but Def- Devin Vassell is. So I think that's a very very good thing that doesn't get a lot of attention about Vassell. But my goodness, he is wow, he's really taking a nice hop in his development, and I like to see how he'll finish out. But I'm with you. I, I he's he's not untouchable, but he comes with a very very high sticker price. I mean, I mean, he meant it's you, you want to see the other team go like, whoa, you know, like that much. You know, I think right. he's there. I think he's there. What do you think? No, I, I, I believe that. And by the way, that was a great stat that you pulled out there. Yeah. As far as how clean he plays. When was the last time we saw Devin Vassell take a bad shot? I mean, yeah. his basketball IQ 
is pretty high up there. If his defense continues to improve, even if it's just slightly, uh, he does get into that untouchable range. Uh, I don't think he'll ever touch it, but he'll get pretty dang mm-hmm. close. But I, I like him, man. He's he is he is my favorite player on this team, not named not named Wemby. Absolutely. All right. And speaking of Wemby, when we get back, we're gonna discuss Wemby and the DPOY. He managed to show me some Vegas numbers where Wemby stands on that race. We're going to be talking about that in just a few seconds. But before we continue our conversation, I want to talk to you about Price Picks. Hey, everybody, you got to go to Price Picks right now. Why? It's America's number one fantasy sports app with over 3 million members. They're the easiest, most exciting way to play DFS. And it's just you guess the numbers. You pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections. Hopefully, you'll see see those winnings starting to roll in. Look, they got it all there. If you need quick withdrawals, they got it. Easy gameplay, they got that. An enormous selection of players and stat types, well, they got that too. That all what makes Price Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Look, Price Picks is really simple to play. You just make your picks. You submit your entry in less than 60 seconds. Hey, they got Apple Pay now for quick, easy deposits into your account this basketball season. They even have theme days such as Taco Tuesday, where each Tuesday price picks discounts, select player projections up to 25% to provide you even more value. What more do you need to go? Hey, go do it right now. Go look for a price picks. Download it on your favorite mobile device. Go check it out. Hey, I have it. You should have it too. Go to pricepicks.com slash LockedOnNBA. Use code LockedOnNBA for a first deposit match up to 100 bucks. PricePicks.com slash LockedOnNBA. Code is LockedOnNBA. That'll get your first deposit match up to $100. Price picks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. And we are back right here on Locked On Spurs with Mike Jimenez. Follow him on X at MJ Acquired Taste. Ask him why he shows Tim Duncan disrespect when it comes to talking about Joel Embiid. We have the receipts. We heard you. We saw you. Sometimes, maybe, yes, Embiid is statistically better than Duncan. Statistically, we were talking about player efficiency, and I never said, <laughs> and, I, and I said it from the get-go, that Duncan was the better player, the greater player, the better leader, and also more uh, has uh, more durability, wasn't as injury-prone as Joel Embiid, but he wasn't asked to do as much as Joel Embiid does. So you all twisted my words completely. In other words, why you got to follow Jimenez on X? Yeah, the yeah. comedy that starts flowing out <laughs> from his tweets. By the way, have you signed the Sohan apology form yet? No. I, okay. I never, I, just I never, even put my, never even put my first name on it, man. I've just been holding okay. on to it, dude. We're not going to go down that rabbit hole right now. I'm gonna, I'm saving today. that topic for you for a later show. I'm pushing towards the end of the season where we have a – You're going to wait for Jeremy season. to have a good game. You're going to wait for him to have a good then game. Then I'm going to say, heck, hey, Jimenez, come back on. Yeah, come, <laughs> come on. Yeah, you're on tomorrow. All right. Hey, we're talking about uh, all things silver and black and now about Wimby. So the race for the final season awards is here. Your MIPs, most improved, your rookie of the year, uh, Wimby. I think he's a lock already. Coach of the year, all that good stuff. But one that is getting really heated right now is the NBA's defensive player of the year. Now, obviously, Wimby's on there. Yes, of course he is. Of course he is. He's on the list of what he's doing defensively. But during the break, he managed gave me some updated news. Now, prior to the recording, uh, Wimby was third, or at least the third best odds he managed, right, to get the award behind Jared Allen and Rudy Gobert. da da da, da. As of this recording, Wimby has moved up one. He now is number two with the second best odds behind Gobert, and he managed, I think that's a 12, plus 1,200. My goodness, could he do it? Could he be the first NBA rookie to get DPOY, he managed? No, I don't think that he's going to win Defensive Player of the Year, but I want to see him on the first team All-NBA defensive team. I think that's very possible. Rudy Gobert is a center. Wemby, if he's considered a center, it'd be sad if he's second place overall in votes and he gets bumped to the second team. So maybe Mm -hmm. they'll add him in as a big guy. Maybe they'll just put him down as a big alongside Rudy Gobert. Uh, But the odds that Wemby has had to win uh, Defensive Player of the Year were like 50-1. to about three weeks ago, then it was 40 to one, mm-hmm. then it was 20 to one. He was in the top three and now he jumps over Jared Allen to be second in the odds. And right now, I mean, at plus 1200, you can still get 12 to one on your money. If it happens, I don't think it's going to happen, but there is one stat though, that I had never heard of until this past week, which What's is that? stock. I had never heard of the stock stat. What's that? 
which is a combination of steals and blocks. Okay. And last I saw, if I wasn't mistaken, he has 50 more than the person who's in second place. I mean, my goodness. Because he's getting blocks, he's getting steals, and the blocks that he's getting are not only down low, weak side D and things like that. Obviously, we've seen him all year block three-point attempts for crying out loud. He's a very dynamic defensive player, and it's one of those things where I wonder if they're going to punish him when it comes to the fact that as a team, defensively, we're not any good. Yeah. But this is an individual award, and individually, he is doing an elite level of defense. We see it. The rest of the world sees it. He's leading the league, or he's up one of the leaders in blocks. He's yep. getting more than a steal a game. The guy is a stud defensively. And it's so amazing that he's doing this at 20 years old. Absolutely. He's making a push for defensive player of the year. What I want to see is if he can keep doing this, because I saw that he, what, had more blocks than several teams in the month of February, like several teams combined with all their players, right? So Mm -hmm. it's amazing what he's been able to do. If he can make this run for another two or three weeks, we might actually have a race for defensive player of the year. He has a legit chance. I don't think he's there yet, but man, making first team would be amazing. It'd be yeah. a good feather in the cap for Victor yeah. Wembanyama. He is first in blocks, tenth in defensive rebounds, fourteenth in just rebounds overall, sixteenth in steals. Now, mind you, he's, yeah. he's doing this as a center. Um, and if during his time when he was playing off the power forward, the the the, the power forward position. When he's there, he still ranks first in blocks, first in steals among power forwards, second in rebounds, second in defensive rebounds. So, yeah, he's he's doing it all. You know, he's actually one of the center NBA league leaders in deflections per game. He averages about six, six to seven per game. So he's just causing all types of havoc. He's altering shots at the rim. You, you know, his length is an issue. You see teams and the players of the opposition dare to get to the rim, but they see him there. They back it out. Yeah. Um, I think, although, yes, I do agree with you. I think the team uh, deficiencies on the defensive end is going to hurt him, even though it should not. But let me put it this way. I would not be surprised if he does become the first rookie to get the DPOY. I, I would not be surprised whatsoever. I don't think anybody should be, Jimenez. Well, I wonder – the stats and what he's doing out there is Rudy Gobert really that much better defensively because he because Wemby goes toe-to-toe on blocks goes toe-to-toe on steals goes toe-to-toe on deflections goes toe-to-toe on all that and I wonder if Rudy Gobert has such great odds simply out of reputation simply out of the fact that he's won the award before simply because he's a veteran and I wonder if voters are going to look at Wemby and think to themselves you know what uh, he doesn't have the the long history, the long career. And I know awards shouldn't be done that way. I hate it whenever t- players get MVP awards and it's like a, you know, all-encompassing career award. I hate it when people do that. Uh, but you look at Wemby, if you were to say that he wins the award, I would not be disappointed nor shocked because he should be considered that. I mean, again, that stat, stock, steals and blocks. When you think of defense, what do you think of? You think of steals, blocks, and rebounds, and he's got all three. Yeah. So uh, I don't think he's going to win it. My goodness, the fact that he's in the conversation at 20 years old says a whole heck of a lot. Yeah. Um, He better be in that first all-defensive NBA team. I I think think that would be more shocking if he's not on there. But he meant I think this this may go down to the wire. I think it may go down to the wire. Why? I think if again, if they're just going to base it on stats and individual stats, then I can see Minnesota perhaps shelving Gobert from a game to load management as they get ready for the postseason. Huh. Can I can I throw out one other thing? What's what's up? Rudy Gobert gets hurt from time to time. That too. You need to, you need to have sixty five games played. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not I'm not hoping for a Rudy Gobert injury or anything like that. Wink, wink. But uh, <laughs> hey, man, is <laughs> gotta gotta light those uh, those Wemby candles. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Again, you know, as of right now. By the way, who who are these odds from again? The ones you sent me. I'm looking at my phone right now. Sportsbook. 
Okay, yeah, so at least according to DraftKings, Wimby is, as of this recording, the second best odds at plus 1,200. Gobert has minus 800. Yeah, that, that's kind of a big gap, though. That, that's, oh, that's it a big, is, big it is a big gap. It's a big yeah. gap. Uh, just to let you know what minus 800 means. Uh, minus 800 basically means that they believe that Gobert has an 88% chance of winning. That's that that's the numbers. But again, it's just get it closer and closer and closer because uh, you look at Wemby's odds going from 50 to 1 to 40 to 25 to 20 to 12. Uh, Wemby is going in that direction. He's leapfrogging all of these players. Who has he leapfrogged? He leapfrogged Jared Allen. He leapfrogged uh, Derek White. He leapfrogged uh, 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 Chet Holmgren. I mean, the, the, the people that he's leapfrogging along the way, uh, he's always been in the top eight. Mm-hmm. Spec factor that he's getting this past month or so because of the the end of January that he had, the February that he had with the rodeo road trip. Yeah, it didn't it didn't come into wins, uh, but defensively we're seeing how yeah. special he had those he five by be. five games. He had those yeah. five by five, the steals and the blocks, five by five. Yeah, mm-hmm. and again, that's that's defense right there. And I wonder if people are going to take a look back at it all. The voters are going to take a look back at it all at the season and just look at the numbers and the raw data and go, well, wait a minute. The Gobert yeah. be comparison yeah. defensively is probably closer than what we think. And think about it this way. Look at the defensive players that Gobert gets to play with. He gets to go play with 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 the with, 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 with Cat. He has to go play yeah. with Anthony Edwards. Wemby doesn't have that luxury. He doesn't have that luxury there. And I think that what Wemby's being what Wemby has done defensively is a lot more impressive. Absolutely, absolutely. But there you have it. Update on Wemby's DPOI chase. Hopefully he gets it. I think that'd be amazing. And again, nobody should be shocked if he gets it. Nobody, nobody. What he's doing right now, if you've been paying attention, nobody should be shocked. He is Mike Jimenez of Alamo City Sports Podcast, the guy who likes to get Spurs fans riled up on X at MJ Acquired Taste. When are you going to be filling out that Sohan form? Will it be on your show uh, on, on YouTube? Oh, it hasn't happened yet, man. And again, not trying to stir the pot, but Sohan you? is tradable. I, Sohan's tradable. You know how I know he's tradable? Why? You came on my I show. Knew, I knew you were going to say you that. You said he was tradable. I knew it. I didn't. I, okay, run the tape back. Where did I say? Sohan is tradable. I didn't say that. You said all these players, except for Wemby and Vassell, are tradables. What you said, yeah. which means you put two and two together. You put two and two together. That means you said everybody else was tradable because you did not exclude Jeremy <laughs> Sohan from that. <laughs> you said he's tell us about tell us about the show on YouTube, Animal City Sports Podcast. You guys are growing fast. Well, the big news is that we now have a website, Alamo City Podcast Network uh, Go check it out. All of our shows are there, and it's not just my show. The show that I do with Joe, uh, we we do a show every day from ten. To about uh, from ten fifteen to about eleven thirty or so, uh, it's on YouTube as well. Uh, but we have uh, Rudy Campos Jr. with the Sweep the League, which goes on from two to three thirty. Uh, we have Generation Duo with Brandon Medina, the Fantasy Gods. All of the shows that we have are going to be put on there uh, as an audio file, so you can check that out. You can also catch our show on all the major podcast platforms, whether it be Spotify or iHeart app and things like that. Uh, but again, our show is on YouTube as well, so if you want to. See our pretty faces. We can do that. Jeff Garcia is oftentimes on the show, uh, but the show's doing well. the uh, The viewing is is getting higher, and now the website's there. We're we're actually creating a network uh, because locally, sports talk radio goes dark around ten a.m., mm-hmm. and we're trying to fill that void. And a lot of podcasts have popped up. I know Mike Taylor has in the building with Rudy J as well. I mean, follow all of us because we get unfiltered, and we don't have those seven minute long commercials between our sports takes. Yeah. Uh, so check us out again, uh, Alamo city sportscast on YouTube. Yes. Go check it out. As Mikey man is mentioned right now, it is growing fast. So jump on board as you can. Yeah. Just go subscribe. Yeah. Easy said and done. You'll enjoy it. Trust me. You'll have fun with the Manage show and all the shows on the network. And speaking of following, make sure to follow lockdown Spurs on YouTube. Ken's five plus app, iTunes, Spotify, Pick a platform. We are there. Locked On Sports Today is a 24-7 streaming channel only on YouTube. Yes, the Locked On Network has a 24-hour, 7-day-a-week 
streaming sports channel on YouTube. It's live right now. Go subscribe. We're all there. We'll be back next week. We're going to kick things off with Casey Vieira. He will be back on Monday discussing all things San Antonio Spurs. Jimenez, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for not unzipping your shirt during the show. Go Spurs. Go. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> For Mikey Menez, I am Jeff Garcia. We're going to put a lock on this episode of Locked on Spurs.